In this video I'm going to show you how to create a searchable drop-down list. So I use data validation drop-down lists all the time. You know this thing where you can use data validation to choose something from a list. Boom. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So this drop-down list here is created from these cells over here just using a simple data validation. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'm sure you already know. Here's the problem. If you've got a very long list, sometimes it can be difficult to find the value you're looking for. This isn't a particularly long list, but imagine there was a thousand names on here. This is made even harder if you don't know exactly what you're looking for. Imagine if I'm looking for somebody Winfrey. I don't know their first name. I'm looking for somebody Winfrey in a list which is sorted by first name, and that's going to be really difficult. Oh, there they are. Now, this list initially looks the same. Yeah, it's just a drop down list. But this one's different. This one I can type in. And once I've typed in there, it's going to narrow down my search to just looking for the things I'm interested in. If I'm a bit more wide ranging, it's going to look for all of the names that contain the word, in this case, John. So Boris Johnson, Elton John, etc., etc. Whatever I type in here, it's going to look for all of the, the names that contain that particular letter making it much easier to find what it is that I'm looking for, especially if you've got a thousand names. So, how do I do it? I'm going to get rid of this and start again. The good news is here that I didn't use any VBA, I didn't use any array formulas, and I didn't use any ActiveX components. This is all just done with data validation and some old-fashioned formulas. first formula I'm going to use is the search formula. I'm going to give myself a target. So equals search. The fine text I'm going to look for is this in D2, which I'm going to lock down by using the F4 key, keyboard shortcut. Within text, G2, and close that off. It doesn't find John within Angelina Jolie, so therefore it returns value. But if I copy this one down, you'll see that some of these, Boris Johnson, does contain John, so it returns a number. It returns the number 7, incidentally, because it finds it in the 7th character position. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it finds the word John. Actually, I don't care whether it finds it in the 7th, the 2nd, or the 1st position. It doesn't really matter. I'm only interested in whether it finds it at all. So I can turn this from a number and value into something that returns true or false by using the isNumber function. So isNumber wraps around there and then just turns this from values and numbers into falses and trues. And I can check and see if this is working at the moment. I'm looking up for John's, which is true. If I look for a different search term, you'll see that changes and key is found in Ban Ki-moon and Jackie Chan. So that seems to be working so far. I'll take this a little bit further and turn these falses and trues into some other numbers by using an if wrapper. I'm putting an if at the start of that. I'm going to change these into, to begin with, ones and zeros. So you can see now I've got a one and a zero. Now I'm getting closer to what I actually want. What I actually want in terms of this is not one, 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 but I want one, two, three, four. Yeah? Now, so I want this to increment every time it finds a match for my text. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. My preferred method is to change this from a 1 and use the max function. Using the max function here, and I'm going to check the range between h1 and h1. And then I'm going to lock down the first of those h1s by using f4, so that the first one is locked, the second one is not. And then, when I'm looking at that range, I'm going to add the number 1. Okay, so what does that do? Well, what this means is if I just also fill this down just one position, if I'm looking at it here, it says, OK, if this is true, which it is, then give me the max of this range. So everything in this range here, which it evaluates to a zero, and then add one, so therefore it gives me the number one. When I autofill it down a little bit further, if I look at this cell here, it says, if this evaluates to true, which it does, give me the max of this range here. The max of that range, of course, is 1. Add 1 to give us 2. And so on and so forth, all the way down, giving me every time it finds a match, it increments up by 1. Now we're getting somewhere. 
I'm going to move this column along from where it is at the moment to the other side because I want it to be on the left or leftmost. That should give you a clue as to the next function I'm going to use. Um, and we're then going to use this column to create a dynamic list over here in column I. Before I do that, I just want to use show you another function which you're going to use as part of this, the rows function. Equals rows. And then this basically just counts the, the number of rows in a given array. So if I start this in cell I1, uh, no, sorry, I2, which is this one I'm currently in, through to I2, and then lock the first of those I2s down by using F4, and enter that, it just says, well, I2 to I2, that's one row high. If I follow it down, this one says I2 to I3, that's two high, etc, etc. This is a really useful function in order to get yourself some incremental numbers. It's not useful on its own, of course, it's only useful if you use it in conjunction with other functions. And I'm going to use, as some of you probably guessed, the VLOOKUP function here. So I'm going to wrap a VLOOKUP around here. It uses this incremental row series here, and it uses this table across here, and it uses the second column across, and it's an exact match, like so. When I fill this one down, it gives me all of those people whose, in this case, name contains KI. If I just check and see if this is still working, that seems to be working fine. I'll tidy this one up by putting an if error wrap around there. I'm going to just say if that's an error, give me the empty cell, which is semico um, invert commas, invert commas. And that just neatens that up a little bit. Now, very nearly there now, with a dynamic list. Whatever I type in here is going to give me a list of all of the names that contain that text. The problem I've got now is that I don't know how many cells this is going to be. Yeah, if I type in B, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I type in Tiger, it's 2. If I type in, type in John, it's four, etc., etc. So I need to basically know how many cells are going to be in this range. An easy way of doing that is by using COUNTIF. COUNTIF. And the range I'm going to look at is I2 to I whatever. And the criteria for this is I just want to look for when it's got some text in there. So a nice easy way of looking for some text is to use inverted commas, question mark, asterisk, inverted commas. So that's just basically saying is equal to something of a text string. So that's going to evaluate to the number four as I'm changing this. That will change automatically. Now we're going to use this as part of the offset function. So offset. says, tell me where to start this particular range, and I'm going to start it in I2, which is the top name. How many rows? One, so therefore I'm just going to use another comma because it's going to default to one. How many columns? One, again, so I'm just another comma because that is the default. And then heights, this is the one that I'm interested in. The height, this is where I'm going to use that count if that we just saw a moment ago that just says count if I2 to I whatever, and then the criteria is this question mark asterisk, which I put in inverted commas. So I want to make all of those references absolute. And then finally, the width in, so if I just uh, leave that one blank, because that will just default to one again, that's, which is fine. Now, this function isn't any use on its own. Well, actually, what it's going to return in terms of this is a range of cells. In this case, it will return the ra this range of cells. It's going to be really useful to put this as a named range. I'll show you how it's done. First of all, I'm going to copy this formula to the clipboard. I'm going to go to the name manager 
and create a new name called validation list. I'm going to paste that formula in what it refers to. So I can check this is working by clicking onto this name and then using this little button here and you can see at the moment it's choosing these two cells. So the named range validation list refers to these two cells. However, if I change this and then check it again, now it's referring to these four cells. In other words, the range itself is dynamic dependent on how many names are in that list. So why is this useful? This is useful because now I can use this as the range in my data validation. So if I go to data, data validation, user value from a list, the source, I want to use one of my named ranges, I'll use a shortcut here for F3 to bring up that named list, use my validation list, OK and OK. Right, so now my this is in place can use this to pick from it and I can type in something here and now, now here's a problem I can't actually enter this in because data validation itself is restricting me from doing it so what do I need to do to go back in here data validation and the error alert I need to turn this message off so now this means that I can change this value Use the drop down list which changes these cells here, which changes the drop down itself and gives me just my filtered list. So that's how to create a searchable drop down list. I should uh, point out that I got a lot of the ideas from this from uh, Your Excel Nerd, which is a, a YouTube channel that you should check out. It's got some great stuff on there. Anyway, I hope this has uh, been useful. Thanks for watching.